The story is called Quiche. It was written by Jack London. Here is Roy DePew to tell you the story. Quiche lived at the edge of the polar sea. He had seen thirteen suns in the Eskimo way of keeping time. Among the Eskimos, the sun each winter leaves the land in darkness, and the next year a new sun returns so it might be warm again. The father of Quiche had been a brave man, but he had died hunting for food. Quiche was his only son, and Quiche lived alone with his mother Ikiga. One night, the village council met in the big igloo of Kloshkwan, the chief. Quiche was there with the others. He listened, then waited for silence. It is true, he said, that you give us some meat, but it is often old and tough meat and has many bones. The hunters were surprised. This was a child speaking against them, a child talking like a grown man. Keish said, My father, Bach, was a great hunter. It is said that Bach brought home more meat than any of the two best hunters, and that he divided the meat so that all got an equal share. Nah, nah, the hunters cried. Put the child out. Send him to bed. He should not talk to gray beards this way. Keish waited until the noise went. You have a wife, Ugluck, he said, and you speak for her. My mother has no one but me, so I speak. As I say, Bach hunted greatly, but is now dead. It is only fair, then, that my mother, who was his wife, and I, his son, should have meat when the tribe has meat. I, Kish, son of Bach, have spoken. Again there was a great noise in the igloo. A boy should not talk to the council like that, said Ugluk. Shall the young tell us men the things we shall do, asked Masuk. The council ordered Kish to bed, even talked of giving him no food. Kish jumped to his feet. Hear me, he cried. Never shall I speak in the council igloo again. I shall go hunt meat like my father, Buck. There was much laughter when Kish spoke of hunting. The laughter followed Kish as he left the council meeting. The next day, Kish started out for the shore where the land meets the ice. Those who watched saw that he carried his bow and many arrows. Across his shoulder was his father's big hunting spear. Again there was laughter. Some shook their heads, and the women looked at the mother of Kish and felt sorry for her. He will be back soon, they told her. Do not worry. One day passed, then a second. On the third day a great wind blew, and there was no sign of Kish. His mother Ikiga put burned seal oil on her face to show her sorrow. The women shouted at their men for letting the little boy go, and the men made no answer, but got ready to search for the body of Kish. Early next morning, Kish walked into the village. Across his shoulders was fresh meat. Go, you men with dogs and sleds, follow my footsteps. Travel for a day, he said. There is much meat on the ice, a she-bear and her two cubs. His mother was very happy. Kish, trying to be a man, said to her, Come, Ikiga, let us eat and after that I shall sleep, for I am tired. There was much talk after Kish went to his igloo. The killing of a bear was dangerous, 
but it was three times more dangerous to kill a mother bear with cubs. The men did not believe Kish had done so. But the women pointed to the fresh meat. At last the men agreed to go for the meat that was left. But they were not very happy. One said that even if Kish had killed the bear, he probably had not cut the meat into pieces. But when the men arrived, they found that Kish had not only killed the bear, but had also cut it into pieces, just like a grown hunter. And so began the mystery of Kish. On his next trip, he killed a young bear. And on the following trip, a large male bear and its mate. How does he do it? the hunters asked each other. He does not even take a dog with him. Then there was talk of magic and witchcraft in the village. He hunts with evil spirits, said one. Maybe his father's spirit hunts with him, another said. But Kish continued to bring meat to the village. Some people thought he was a great hunter. There was talk of making him chief after old Klosh Kwan. They even waited, hoping he would come to council meetings. But he never came. I would like to build an igloo, Kish said one day, but I have no time. My job is hunting. So it would be just if the men and women of the village who eat my meat build my igloo. And the igloo was built. It was even bigger than the igloo of the chief, Klosh Kwan. One day Ugluk talked to Kish. It is said that you hunt with evil spirits, and they help you kill the bear. Is not the meat good? Kish answered. Has anyone in the village yet become sick after eating it? How do you know evil spirits are with me? Or do you say it because I am a good hunter? Ugluk had no answer. The council sat up late talking about Kish and the meat. They decided to spy on him. On Kish's next trip, two young hunters, Bim and Bon, followed him. After five days, they returned. The council met to hear their story. Brothers, Bim said, we followed Kish, and he did not see us. The first day he came to a great bear. Kish shouted at the bear loudly. The bear saw him and became angry. It rose high on its legs and growled. But Kish walked up to it. We saw it, Bon the other hunter said. The bear began to run toward Kish. Kish ran away. But as he ran, he dropped the little round ball on the ice. The bear stopped and smelled the ball, then ate it. Kish continued to run, dropping more balls on the ice. The bear followed and ate the balls. The council members listened to every word. Bim continued the story. The bear suddenly stood up straight and began to shout in pain. The bear growled and jumped up and down. Never have I seen such a thing. Evil spirits, said Ugluk. I do not know, said Bon. I can tell only what my eyes saw. The bear grew weak. It walked along the shore, shaking its head from side to side. Then it sat down and pulled at its own fur with its sharp claws. Kish watched the bear that whole day. For three more days, Kish continued to watch the bear. It was getting weaker and weaker. Kish moved carefully up to the bear and pushed his father's spear into it. And then, asked Klosh Kwan, and then we left. That afternoon, the council talked and talked. When Kish arrived in the village, the council sent a messenger to ask him to come to the meeting. 
But Kish said he was tired and hungry. He said his igloo was big and could hold many people if the council wanted a meeting. Kroshkwan led the council to the igloo of Kish. Kish was eating, but he welcomed them. Kloshkwan told Kish that two hunters had seen him kill a bear. And then in a serious voice to Kish he said, We want to know how you did it. Did you use magic and witchcraft? Kish looked up and smiled. No, Kloshkwan, I am a boy and know nothing of magic or witchcraft. But I have found an easy way to kill the ice bear. It is headcraft, not witchcraft. And may any man? Any man. There was a long silence. The men looked at each other, and Kish ate. And will you tell us, O oh Kish? Kloshkwan asked in a shaking voice. I will tell you. It is very simple. Watch. Kish picked up a thin piece of whalebone. The ends were pointed and sharp as a knife. Kish bent the bone into a circle. Suddenly he let the bone go, and it became straight with a sharp snap. He picked up a piece of seal meat. So, he said, First, make a circle with a sharp, thin piece of whalebone. Put the circle of bone inside some seal meat. Put it in the snow to freeze. The bear eats the ball of meat with a circle of bone inside. When the meat gets inside the bear, the meat melts and the bone goes snap. The sharp points make the bear sick. It is easy to kill then. It is simple. Ugluck said, Oh. And Kloshkwan said, Ah. And each said something in his own way, and all understood. And that is the story of Kish, who lived long ago on the edge of the polar sea. Because he used headcraft instead of witchcraft, he rose from the poorest igloo to be the chief in the village. And for all the years that followed, his people were happy. No one cried at night with pains of hunger. You have heard the story of Kish. It was written by Jack London. The Voice of America invites you to listen next week at this time to another American short story told in special English.